You are welcome to this online worship brought to you by St. Paul's Presbyterian Church in Burlington, Ontario. This is the seventh Sunday of Easter in the church calendar. The theme for today is Go Count Them Blessings. And today is a day of rejoicing. And we'll start off with me giving you the royal wave and I hope you are giving it back to me. One dad joke for you today, because I know that is all you can handle. What two days are the strongest? Saturday and Sunday, of course. All the others are weekdays. Thank you for supporting each other and your families and neighbors throughout this time. Have I said that enough? Nah, no, I'll keep on doing it. Support is available by calling me at 905 921-5667 or emailing me at stpaulsburlington at gmail.com. Prayer mail goes out on Mondays and Thursdays. Men's ministry meets by Zoom on Wednesdays at 9.30 a.m. and we are studying the book of Philippians. Meet and greet that we held last Wednesday went well. We have decided to do another on Wednesday, June the 3rd at 1.30 p.m. Thank you for your financial contributions to the life and work of St. Paul's Church. We and all churches are facing difficult challenges, but we can do it together with God's awesome help. To make arrangements, please contact Ron Gamble at 905-330-330. 2909 or egamble at simpatico.ca. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday and we'll be celebrating the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the early church. The following Sunday, June 7th, will be Holy Communion. We will do this in remembrance of Jesus. In our call to worship, I will read the light print, and if you could respond with the darker print. Let us be joyful before God. Let us be jubilant this day. Sing to God, O nations of the earth. Our praise song is Count Your Blessings. Would you please sing along with Nicholas? When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed When you are discouraged thinking all is lost Count your many blessings, name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. When you look at others with their lands and gold, Think that Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven nor your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. 
Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God hath done. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Let us come together in prayer today. Would you pray with me the following prayer? God of history and eternity, you came among us in Jesus so that we might come to know you and love you. Through Jesus' life, you have given us a pattern for living and taught us to love one another and forgive as we have been forgiven. By his death and resurrection, you promise that nothing can separate us from your love. And so we wait with hopeful anticipation for the fullness of your redemption, relying on the power of the Holy Spirit now and always. God of our days and all the days to come, we confess that we feel lost waiting for your promised redemption in such uncertain times. You made us for unity in community, yet we have nursed grievances and settled for unresolved tensions. You commissioned us to be witnesses to Christ's ministry, yet we find it hard to share our experience of your love and grace with others. Forgive us for accepting disunity instead of working through differences. Forgive us for failing to share the good news of Christ's love, even with those closest to us. Friends, hear the good news. Jesus Christ is our high priest and advocate, interceding before God the Father on our behalf. Know that his love for us is undying, Trust that you are forgiven through his grace and with his courage. Forgive one another. Now in the words Jesus has taught us to pray, let us say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, as we enter into our family time, the question is, what have you been blessed with today? Well, can you imagine for a moment that we actually have joy bubbles in our bodies? Yes, I said joy bubbles. Children at Kinder's age know this to be true. But as we get older, they are still there, but we forget about them. Another little known fact, but once we hear it, it actually makes sense. Fact, God multiplies our joy bubbles when we rejoice in the blessings that God has given us. You see, rejoice means to rejoy or to multiply our joy. So when you count your blessings and rejoy with each one, the joy bubbles in us multiply, and here's a big word for you, exponentially. That means with each rejoicing, we do not add to the beginning joy, but to the joy that has already been multiplied. For example, Take one thing, you answered the question of what you have been blessed with today, and that equals one joy bubble. Then rejoice in it. 
times 10. So now it's 10 joy bubbles. Then rejoice in it again, and 10 times 10 is 100 joy bubbles. Then rejoice in it again, 100 times 10 is 1,000 joy bubbles. That is only three rejoicings, and you've already gone from one to 1,000. Imagine if you kept rejoicing. We will be singing a song at the end of the video today. Can you figure out how many joy bubbles we will receive? Well, let's listen now to God speaking through his word. Let us pray. Loving God, as we prepare to hear the words of Scripture, send your Holy Spirit to give us attentive minds and open hearts so that we may hear your word more clearly and love you more fully. Through Christ, your living word. Amen. Well, the scriptures today is taken from Acts chapter 8, verses 4 to 25 from the New Living Translation. But the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Crowds listened intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims and many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So there was great joy in that city. A man named Simon, who had been a sorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the great one, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astounded them with his magic. But now the people believed Philip's message of good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself believed and was baptized. He began following Philip wherever he went, and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles Philip performed. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. As soon as they arrived, they prayed for these new believers to receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them, for they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers, and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered them money to buy this power. Let me have this power too, he exclaimed, so that when I lay my hands on people, they will receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter replied, May your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. You can have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive your evil thoughts, for I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon exclaimed that these terrible things you said won't happen to me. After testifying and preaching the word of the Lord in Samaria, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, and they stopped in many Samaritan villages along the way to preach the good news. So our message is today, go count them blessings. The subtitle of the message is, what do we do with these blessings? This uh, scripture lesson today is a cautionary tale of how it is better to count on what God is doing with your blessings rather than counting what you can make from them. Carrie Newhoff says, we could sit in a corner and pretend, or we could ask ourselves, what does this time make possible? He was writing a post about what we could be doing 
during this time of pandemic? Do we sit around waiting for what was to come back? Or could we act with how the Lord is leading us in this time? The idea of you don't go to church, you are the church, has a whole new meaning. Do you remember that song, I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together? All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. When we cannot come to the church building, we are truly the church scattered throughout the community and the world. The same principle can be seen in this passage in Acts. Philip was sent by the Holy Spirit to a town in Samaria. He brings the message of good news in Jesus and blessings pour out, salvation, healings, and deliverance from evil spirits. Why do you think Peter and John were sent to join Philip? Well, if you answered that the scripture says to impart the Holy Spirit, you're right. God does not do anything without a plan. Just the same today. The people of this Samaritan city would need someone to guide them when Philip was sent elsewhere. We still need God in our lives. But do you think the Holy Spirit was there to be a blessing of comfort or to continue the work Jesus had started in them? Well, let's see what Simon the Sorcerer gives us as some insight into human nature. Simon was probably a huckster, a charlatan, one out for his own good. When you believe in Jesus and truly receive the Holy Spirit, you are changed from the inside out. Look at what happened to Saul. He was changed even for his name. He would become Paul the Apostle. Simon was not changed. His old way showed through. He wanted the power of the Holy Spirit for his own glory, and the apostles saw right through him. They told him to repent before God because he was full of bitterness and captive to sin. All the blessings he saw did not impact him in any way. I don't think there was any joy bubbles in him. I believe the meaning of counting your blessings is to allow them to impact you for change in your life. The more you can count, the more you trust. The more you trust, the more you believe. The more you believe, the more thankful you become for all the blessings you have received. Simon the Sorcerer is a prime example of what Carrie was saying. You could sit in your corner and pretend that you are changed, but are not. Or you could ask yourselves, why has God blessed me and others around me so richly? And what this time can make possible in our lives. We need to go count them blessings. What blessings have you seen in the past two or three months? I'm sure if we counted everyone's who are watching, we would see hundreds, perhaps thousands. Have you let them impact you? Have you let the joy bubbles multiply? Have you seen God behind all the wonderful acts of kindnesses that we have seen? Have you deepened your trust in God? Is your trust and faith guiding you through this time? This is another blessing. Have the blessings you experienced sent you to act on them, and have you counted the impact you have seen? Rejoicing upon rejoicing. We don't do it to boast for ourselves like Simon, but to show gratitude to Jesus in every way. Have you counted up them blessings and seen all the love you have been surrounded with? Simon still didn't get the fact. He needed to change himself. 
he was still, he still wanted Peter and John to do it for him. To accept Jesus and the healing, deliverance, and salvation he brings is a personal choice. Others can't make it for you or do it for you. We can pretend like Simon or we can see the wonderful new possibilities that Jesus and the Holy Spirit are bringing into our lives. I'd like for you now to listen to what Paul says in Philippians 4, verse 2 to 7. Now I appeal to Eudio and Syntyche, because, please, because you belong to the Lord, settle your disagreement. And I ask you, my true partner, to help these two women, for they worked hard with me in telling others the good news. They worked along with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are written in the book of life. Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. In Philippians, Paul is showing us what we do with the blessings. Yudia and Sintete were probably two people who were having a common disagreement. They were probably approaching it from their previous ways and experience. Maybe they were even saying, we will agree to disagree. How many times have you heard that? or even said it yourselves. Paul was saying there was a new way, and that was focusing on Jesus and what he was doing in their lives, to count their blessings. It is amazing when you can agree in, in something or with someone greater than you that your differences melt away. So when you count your blessings, do it together. Then Paul goes on saying, rejoice in the Lord always, and again and again rejoice. When you count your blessings, do it together and rejoice together. Get those bubbles bubbling. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. How do you get there? Count what God is already doing in your lives now. Want to know how to get through a pandemic? Go count them blessings. See the joy bubbles just waiting to show themselves. Let the Holy Spirit build your trust, your faith, and be grateful. You see, the impact is life changing. Amen and Amen. We now have a fun song from Nicholas. It says, thank you, Lord, for this day, for food, and for clothes. So why don't you create your own verses for what you are thankful for? Will you please sing along with Nicholas? this new day. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Thank you, Lord, for this new day. Right where we are. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Alleluia, praise the Lord. Right where we are. Thank you, Lord, for food to eat. Thank you, Lord, for food to eat. Thank you, Lord, for food to eat. Right where we are. Alleluia, praise the 
Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. Thank you, Lord, for close to where. Thank you, Lord, for close to where. Thank you, Lord, for close to where. Right where we are. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Right where we are. Let us come in prayer today for those who cannot or will not be able to pray for themselves. Let's start off with intercessions. Father God, we, we come to you for those who are grieving loss from COVID-19, either the illness or from those who have passed because of it. For plane crashes, whether it be the snowbirds uh, crash or that crash in India or in Pakistan. For those who are uh, grieving loss because of illness or because of violence. Thank you, Lord, for being with them. Today, we also want to come in thanksgiving for new arrivals, like Michaela, Christina. And we give you thanks for all the blessings that we are able to do for others and what people are doing for us. And we want to thank you for more joy bubbles in our lives to rejoice in. And Lord, for those we love and would name now in the silence of our hearts. We also want to lift up those who are in our prayer mail, on our prayer wall, and for those who we do not even know their names. We pray in and with the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Sunday brings the season of Easter to a close and we begin the season of Pentecost next week. Yet we will continue to receive the blessings God pours out for us in Christ and in creation. For God is so good to us. We offer to God our thanks for such goodness in our tithes and in our offerings. Be blessed and be a blessing. Let us pray. Eternal and ever-present God, we offer you these gifts and thanksgiving for the work of Christ in our lives. Bless them and us with the power of the Spirit, enlisting all of our gifts for the work of reconciliation Christ has given us to do in the world that you love. Amen. Our song now is Rejoice in the Lord Always. Remember earlier I said we would try and count how many joy bubbles we would receive by singing this song together? Well, get ready. Here we go. Please sing along with Nicholas. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice.
rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, and again I say rejoice. Well, I'm doing the happy dance at the end of that song. By the end of the first verse, we had accumulated 10 billion, that's right, 10 billion joy bubbles. Can you feel them bubbling up inside of you now? Friends, hear the good news again. Jesus Christ is our high priest and advocate, interceding before God the Father on our behalf. Go in his joy that is now your joy and rejoice and rejoice. Count this as another blessing today. Amen, amen, and amen.